Good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Community Church. I am Pastor Randall Smith. I'm Pastor of Family Ministries here at Cornerstone. Um, if you are our guest this morning, we welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, for all of you that are here in the seats, as well as those joining us online, we're so glad you're with us this morning. If this is your first time at CCC, please grab your cell phone and text WELCOME to 252-680-1220. Fill out our digital connect card and stop by the Connection Center. After the service, we have a special gift just for you to show you how much we appreciate you coming by today and worshiping with us. Um, from now through August the 11th, the Children's Ministry will be collecting school supplies to donate to Cooper's Elementary School. You can find the list of items needed in your update. Um, the ladies are also hosting a wedding shower for William Bone and Heather Jackson, July the 27th from 10 a.m. till noon. Uh, they are registered at Target and would like Walmart or Lowe's gift cards. Uh, we want to show how much we love William and Heather and by supporting them in this shower and uh, how excited we are for both of them. Uh, I'm extremely excited for Fellowship Month coming up in August. Uh, each Friday night, We'll meet as a church for a fun and fellowship. Uh, we'd love to get your ideas on some things to do, uh, to, some ways that we can fellowship together. Um, so put those on your connect cards. That would be a great place for you to put that. Let us know your ideas. Let us know how you want to just fellowship with each other and share the love of Christ together. You can sign up for any of these events or others or get information on CCC from our website at c2churchrm.com. You, know, you got a weekend update, Facebook page, all of those are great ways to get information about Cornerstone. Again, we're glad that you're here. We're looking forward to a great day worshiping Jesus together. God bless. Good morning. How is everyone this morning? All right, let's stand to our feet. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're just going to raise this roof with our praise and our adoration this morning. Father God, we love you so incredibly much, and we just thank you for the blessing and the privilege that it is to come into your presence this morning. God, we invite you here. We want you to move among us, Father. We want you to show us what worship truly is all about, Father. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray, and all God's children said... Yeah. 
I know we got a lot of stuff going on in this room this morning. As I look out among the crowd, I know that there are things that are weighing us down. I don't know what it is. It could be health. It could be financial. It could be a relationship that's broken. I don't know. Y'all just keep on playing. Y'all just keep on jamming. That's right. Um, but I'm here to tell you that no matter what the enemy throws at us, no matter what it is, we can always raise a hallelujah. Because we know that we are not defeated. Because we know that he went to the cross. He died. He bled. He rose again for our transgression. But he gave, he gave us a hallelujah. So even in the midst of the storm, in the midst of whatever's going on in your life, we can raise a hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. I raise a hallelujah mm, in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. Who believes it? I raise a hallelujah. In the there you go. Sorry. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Oh, and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Remember, it doesn't matter what it is. To you, it might seem little. But anything that steals your joy, let's lay it on the altar this morning and let's leave it there. Okay, we're going to raise a hallelujah. You ready?
the presence of my enemy. Oh, sing a little louder. Your 
Father God, we know that just sometimes we just need to be still and silent in your presence. Because God, we know at those times that are the times when you're speaking to our hearts. And so oftentimes we're so busy talking. And we're so busy with everything that's around us, God, our cell phones, our, our everything, our lives. And we just forget to just be still in your presence. God, and it's those times. It's those times when we miss your voice. You know, we run around our lives and we're constantly bombarded on every direction by everything. And sometimes we're tempted to believe that we're all alone. And we say, God, I can't feel you. God, I can't see you. Why have you left me alone? But God, we know that your promises are true. And God, we know that in your word, you promise that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. So at those moments in our lives when we're letting the world 
crowd out and, and, and just snatch our attention. It's not that you've left us, Father, but it's that we've turned our attention from you. And we've put ourselves on the pedestal of God and we've made ourselves our own God. And we're trying to, to, to fix our problems and to live our lives without talking to the one who gave us life. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come, not in just words, but we ask you to come and we ask you to lead us. God, we want you to be our God and our Lord, our Savior, our Father, our friend. God, we just are ready for you to help us to understand and know that we don't need religion. We don't need ritual. We don't need the weekly habit of coming into this place and going through the motions. But God, we need relationship. That's all you ever wanted. From cover to cover, the Bible just shows over and over again and demonstrates that you desire a relationship with your children. So God, help us not to, to be all balled up and all pent up in religious acts. But God, we just ask that you help us to chase after you. And God, as we, as we feebly attempt to shower you with praise, because we understand and know that we do not know on this side of heaven what true praise looks like. But God, through your Holy Spirit, we ask that you teach us what it is that delights your heart. And God, as we delight your heart, we just pray that you will fill us with your spirit and with your power, and with your truth, and with your joy. So no matter what it is that we're going through life, no matter how forlorn we may feel, that we can still revel in the fact that we live in joy. Remind us, God, that we are not a defeated people. Remind us that you've won. And because you've won, we've won. God, I just pray that everyone in this room right now will receive your spirit of joy into their hearts. No matter what it is that they may be going through, no matter whether they feel like joy or not, maybe we, may we learn what it truly means to find joy and peace in you. Father, we love you. And we lift these things up to you, Father. At this time, I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Please keep in mind that this is not an indication that our worship is ending. For you see, in his word, we are called to give of our time, our talents, and our tithes as a token of appreciation to all the many things the Father has blessed us with. Let's continue to worship. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be over 
Amen. Let's give God some glory this morning. Amen. branched out, did a little something different today. I have a illustration. Our scripture this morning, first of all, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing good this morning? Good. Y'all look good. You well? Even you, Paul. Everybody looking good. Well, I have glasses, but they're probably dirty. But anyway, so our, we got a lot of scripture this morning. I apologize ahead of time, but you know what? It ain't my fault, so it's God. So first of all, we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 58. Verses 3 through 8. And then we're going to switch right over to Matthew 23, 23 to 28. So I'll, I'll let you be finding that. As we do that, I hope everybody had a, a great 4th of July. We just got through celebrating our nation's independence. And to celebrate, I have brought a cake. This cake was made by D. Colbert, who does pretty work. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to ask Mr. Tim if he'd come up here and cut this cake. This is symbolic ceremony, whatever you want to call it. He's going to cut the cake. Not the cheese, what I cook, cake. What I cook, I eat. Okay, if you cut it off of there, you eat it. All right, here's the knife. All right, go for it. It don't matter. I'm not a cake cutter, so do it the best way you can, sir. Little bitty, little bitty. What's wrong? I changed my mind. I'm not eating What's wrong? Kind of spongy? Yeah. It's boing, boing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work very well, is it? No. Mm. Uh, okay. We'll just pass it around. Y'all just bite off a piece. Uh, okay. Better hope you chop or <laughs> Thank you, T. <laughs> we'll get back to that in a second. I'm going to scoot it over out of the way. All right. Hopefully by now, you've probably already figured out what we're going to be talking about. It's not sponge cake. <laughs> you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Right? Um, Jesus had a lot to say about that, and so did God before in the Old Testament. So we're going to start with Isaiah chapter 58 verses 3 through 8. So if you would please stand as we read God's Word together. Why have we fasted, but you have not seen? We have denied ourselves, but you haven't noticed. Look, you do as you please on the day of your fast and oppress all your workers. You fast with contention and strife to strike viciously 
with your fist. You cannot fast as you do today, hoping to make your voice heard on high. Will the fast I choose be like this, a day for a person to deny himself, to bow his head like a reed, and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast I choose? To break the chains of wickedness, to untie the ropes of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to tear off every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the poor and homeless into your house, to clothe the naked when you see him, and not to ignore your own flesh and blood? Then your light will appear like the dawn, and your recovery will come quickly. Your righteousness will go before you, and the Lord's glory will be your rear guard. Now let's flip over to Matthew chapter 23, 23 to 28. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You pay a tenth of mint, dill, and cumin, yet you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. These things should have been done without neglecting the others. Blind guides, you strain out a gnat but gulp down a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup so that the outside of it may also become clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of the bones of the dead in every kind of impurity. In the same way, on the outside you seem righteous to people, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Let's pray. God, thank you for your words this morning. Lord, I pray right now that you will move me out of the way, God. Move me out of the way, step into my shoes, speak through me today, God. Lord, bring your message to your people. Thank you so much. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I've got to be honest with you. Um, this message is going to take a little bit different course than what I had originally planned because God did that last night. Um, I actually was... And it's my fault because I was feeling pretty proud of myself because I had my notes and everything to Melanie Monday morning. I was, I was getting it done. I was happy about that. And then last night while I'm all smug and confident laying in the bed trying to go to sleep, God said, <laughs> guess what I'm fixing to do? No. So, just bear with me. This is the first time I've heard a lot of this too. So we're, we're going we're gonna to roll with it. Um, okay. I think it's pretty safe to say here in the Old Testament in Isaiah, it's God speaking through Isaiah the prophet. In the New Testament in Matthew, these are red letters. Red letters mean Jesus said it. It's pretty safe to say they're on the same page, don't you think? Don't they sound like they're on the same, same area, same track of we got to get the inside fixed first, right? And that was the whole idea with the cake. It's beautiful. It looks really good. Dee did a great job, and i got to tell you, it smells great, which is awful disappointing when you can't cut it, ain't it, Dan? Um, because it is not cake. It is sponge. Um, so it looks pretty, but the inside is useless, right? It's not really useless. Uh, Dee wanted me to keep it. She might wash it off and try to use it around the house or something. I don't know. Um, I might lick that ice and off. Anyway, because <laughs> this smells good. Um, it's got pretty flowers. Anyway, the whole point of that is that while something looks good to everybody else on the outside, the inside may be a complete different thing and we spend so much time trying to make the outside look good that we neglect the inside and that was exactly what was going on when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees how many times did he call them hypocrites 
in that just what what was it five verses he called him hypocrites like three or four times I didn't count so somebody's going to catch me after the service game pastor it was three times okay well whatever it was it was a lot I think he was trying to get a point across right they spent a lot of time they were they were doing everything publicly they were tithing they were giving everything but they were neglecting the weightier matters and we do that and if you try have any of you read the Ten Commandments and then tried to do every one of them how easy is that <laughs> I'm gonna go as far as to say it's impossible we can't do any of that. That's why we have the law. That's what Jesus said. That he came to fulfill the law. We've got the law so that we know that we need him. We can't do it on our own. I can't, there's no way I can read all Ten Commandments and all the law and everything in the Bible and then go out and do it. If I do, I'm going to probably break another one in try, you don't get what I'm saying? Because what happens when you start keeping all the laws good? <laughs> keeping all the laws good, pride. <clears throat> we can't do it. we got to have Jesus to help us. Jesus is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Period. And there is a secret to all of this, and we're going to get to that shortly. Um, I do believe... In the American church today, we have changed the gospel a little bit. We have made it to be about what we do, how we look, how we act. If we come to church every Sunday, you know, what do we say? Oh, he's a good guy. He's in church every time the doors open. He's a good guy. Well, he may be. He may not be. He may be like that cake right there. You know, Steve has a favorite saying. How many of you know it? Sitting in a garage. Thank you. Don't make you a Buick. And sitting in a church don't make you a Christian. Tithing doesn't make you a Christian. Giving to the poor does not make you a Christian. It's not about boxes that we get to tick off. It's not about, you know, qualifications. <laughs> How many of you in here are qualified to be a child of God? Thank you for nobody raising your hand because that would have led to a different conversation. None of us are qualified. The Bible says none are good. No, not one. And we've got to get that through our heads right now. I don't care who tells you on TV or anywhere else that you, as long as you do good or you can be good, you can't be good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can let Jesus work through you. You can have a relationship with God. And you'll find out the closer that relationship gets with God, the better you are. Does that make sense? It's kind of like a conversation I had this morning. Where's Heather? There she is. All right, if y'all have noticed, my choice of drink has changed. This is not a Mountain Dew. Okay, and those of you who are about to pass out, pull yourselves together. It, it, it is a, a monster drink and... and whatever, but it's, this is the zero sugar one, zero calories, zero everything. It has a lot of vitamin B in it, which, well, it's actually, I did my research on this one. That's why we're talking about it. This is better for you than Mountain Dew. Don't mean it's good for you, okay? <laughs> it doesn't mean it's good for you. In fact, the only thing that's good for you, hold it up, Kim, is water. Everything else is what's less bad, okay? So I haven't brought myself to drinking water all the time. I am drinking more water, but I still have to have something with caffeine in it or I'm going to be laying on the floor somewhere. It's all those years of all that Mountain Dew. It's, my body's addicted to caffeine. So 
the point in all of that is it's, there's nothing that's perfect for you except for the purest thing, which is water. In our lives, the only thing that's good for us is the purest thing, which is Jesus. I told you, this is the first time I'm hearing some of this stuff too. Jesus is the purest. Jesus is the Son of God, the one perfect without sin that took our sin. Did y'all, y'all knew that, right? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you about. He took our sin on himself. He paid that price. It would be like if that bottle of water sucked everything bad out of this monster and everything else in the room, and it went into that one bottle of water that Kim was drinking. Can you imagine what that bottle of water would look like? And that's a very, very, very weak comparison to what I'm talking about. Jesus did that. Jesus took all the sin of the world, not just what they'd done that day, not what just they had just done in the past, but what we have done and will do forever. He took all of the world's sin on himself. He was pure. He was perfect. And when we talk about Jesus dying on the cross, it was horrific. It was painful. It was torture. And I'm not going to get graphic and get into everything they did. Just know that it was really bad. It was horrific. I can't even imagine. I watched The Passion of the Christ when it first came out, and I watched that part, and I just sat there and cried. Because, and I don't cry at movies. And I cried at that because I wasn't even thinking about the movie. I was thinking about what Jesus suffered for me. He took all of that on himself. But that wasn't the worst part of the crucifixion, in my opinion. The worst part was he became sin. He took sin. He was pure. He was clean. And he took all of our sin on himself. Can you imagine what that must have been like for him? And he did that for you and for me. And he died on a cross so that we wouldn't have to. And we get tied up. We tie ourselves up and we bind ourselves to things to to we've got to tick the right boxes we've got to look a certain way we've got to act a certain way if we're a Christian and I'm not here please do not say that Pastor Randall told you you can do whatever you want to do because that's not what I if that's what you get out of today's message you ain't listening because this is not a do what you want to do message this is a loving God message the title of the sermon is Y'all ain't read your update. Thank you. Love the Lord your God, and we're going to finish that. Um, Matter of fact, we're going to finish it right now. If you're still in Matthew 23, back up a chapter to Matthew 22. And I think I had said that we're going to start with 35. We're actually going to start with 34. Sorry. Sorry. I told y'all first time. All right, Matthew 22, we're going to read 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? He said to him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Now, today we're just going to focus on the first part of this. Next week we're going to focus on the last part of it. Today we're going to talk about loving God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. What does that mean? 
What does it look like? You may say, well, Pastor Randall, I love God. I do. I love God more than anything in the world. But Sunday is the only day I have to myself. That's the only time I have any free time is on Sunday. So I can't come to church because I've got stuff that I've got to do. But I love God. Pastor Randall, I love God with all my heart. I do. But I just can't afford to tithe right now. I just can't afford it. You don't understand. I just can't afford it. A tenth is a lot. But I love God. Some of you are probably mad with me by now, but that's okay. The point is, you know what? What did he say? If you tithe, you can tithe 50%. You can give your whole paycheck. But if you don't love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, all of that, if you don't, then you're just throwing your money away. Keep your money. It's not what you do. It's why you do it. Why do you tithe? Why do you give money to the poor? Why do you feed the hungry? Why do you do that? Why do you take care of the widows and the orphans? Why? So you can check off a box and say, hey, look what I did. I'm good. I'm building me a better mansion. I've heard that. That, that makes the hair stand up on my neck. Here's the point. It's not about what you do. It's about why you do it. And it should all flow out of that verse right there. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your heart. I see a lot of, right now, we're in a time in our nation where the nation seems to be divided. Half the nation is very patriotic, and half the nation is not. And we're going to leave it at that. Okay? You've got, you've got a large majority of people flying the flag, and you've got a group of people stomping on it. And so now the, the nation is in kind of a weird place. And I see, um, <laughs> I saw a meme on Facebook the other day and oh it sounds good until you really think about what they're saying it says as for me and my house y'all know how that's supposed to go no, that ain't what it said it said as for me and my house we will stand for the flag we will and it went on and on and, it, and, it, and we will pray was at the bottom of the list that is not how that verse goes it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But they changed it because why? Because to them, patriotism is more important than God. You know, we see, I'll, I'll ride around and I'll see American flags flying. And that's great. I am not against the flag. Oh, no. And I am not against patriotism. I count myself as a patriot. I count myself as someone who loves this nation and the freedoms that it provides. But I love God more. We see these flags, and I see a, a, an American flag and a Christian flag flying under it. And while I get it, and I understand, that's great, but shouldn't it be the other way around? Just say it. That's the problem with our nation. The problem with our nation is we have forgotten that God comes first. We have forgotten that we're to love God. Everything else we do should flow out of that love for God. If you read the Ten Commandments, the first several commandments are all about God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Uh, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. They are all about God. The rest of the commandments, the last part, is about each other. Stealing, killing, that's all about loving your neighbor. 
So literally, all the law hangs on these two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. How many of you think about God constantly during the week? I ain't going to say that I do. I, I want to, and I try to. Here's the problem. It needs to become where I don't have to try to. But does that just happen? For some it may. For others it may not. And we've talked about love. We've talked about how in the past, how, how many of you, you know, were in love the first time you saw your spouse? So y'all, y'all were too, too used to. I was. No. Here's the the truth of it, though. I imagine is that you did have to take a little time to get to know that person, right? Because if not, what are you basing that love on? Exactly. It's probably not love. It's probably that other L word. Until you get to know that person, until you spend time with that person, until you talk to that person and listen to that person. It's two ways. But it, it, it happens, right? I believe a lot of us fell in like the first time we saw our spouse. But to say we fell in love is a little different because love, love is something that, that does take time. It is something that that you have to work on, but not in a bad way. You know, I, I hear, yeah, marriage, it's a job. You got to work on it. And it sounds so, so, oh, no. <laughs> it's one of those labors of love. It's something that you love to work on. When you, look, when y'all first fell in love, what did you do? Guys, come on, anybody going to help me out today? Well, I can, let me tell you about me, okay? I wanted to talk to them all the time. Ain't that right, Mama? And you know, back in the day, we didn't have cell phones. So the cord would be stretched all around the house till I could find some privacy. And, and if you were on the phone, nobody else could use the phone. So the, the, your phone in your house... I tried to call you 10 times and your line was busy. Randall was on the phone again with that girl. And Lord forbid you date somebody that's long distance. I had to get a, get a, a, a job to pay the phone bill. You know, but that's what we wanted to do, right? We want to be with them every minute of every day. We want to be with them. We want to hear their voice. I just want to hear your voice, right? Come on, guys. Am I the only one that was like that? I don't think so. I'm putting a lot of pressure on some of you, though. You, know, you never did me like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I see you smiling, Randy. I, I know. <laughs> it's like, man, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> But that's what we did. And, and every time we went, to town, you know, you can tell I live in the country because we go to town. It's, it's an experience, you know. We're going to town. Yeah, okay. So you go to town, and when you go to town, what does that mean? It means you're probably shopping or, or somewhat, something like that. So every time you go to town, you're looking for something for that person, right? You're always buying them little, little things. Um, they're not here right now, but when Kim and Derek were dating, and y'all know Derek Stallings and Kim Stallings, when the, and Kim is my sister, for those of you who did not realize that, when they were dating, Derek would bring her, she used to collect unicorns, and every time he came to the house, he would bring her a little unicorn figurine. She had hundreds of them by the time they got married. And uh, for some reason, he stopped me, but anyway, um, he would bring her those little unicorns, and he made it a point because he knew she liked unicorns. He, he went and found them, and he would buy them, and he'd bring them to her. 
because he loved her and he wanted to show his love for her in some way and that was a way to do it, right? And we do that for each other. For our, for, for our spouses, we know what they like and so we try. How do you know what they like, by the way? Rabbit trail to prove a point. How do you know what they like? You spend time with them. You listen. When they walk by a store window and go, that pocketbook sure is nice. I'd love to have a pocketbook like that. Mental note. Then on payday, you go down to the store and you go, that pocketbook costs how much? <laughs> you got one that looks a lot like it? <laughs> In the clearance section? Maybe I can get on the Facebook marketplace and find one used that's in really good shape. But you, you go right down there and you get it. Why? Because you were paying attention. Because you were hanging on every word they said. Because you was in love. Y'all see where I'm going with any of this? That's the kind of relationship God wants with us. He wants us to hang on his every word. And he will talk to you if you listen. But you can't listen if you're only talking. If you don't stop talking every once in a while and just sit, the Bible says be still and know that I am God. If you don't be still and know he's God, you're not going to hear him. There's a reason why they say he speaks with a still, small voice. I do believe the, lo the more you listen to that voice, the louder it gets. And you'll start to recognize his voice. And then you will develop this love that you, it'll blow your mind. You think your love for your spouse and your spouse's love for you is something else. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm not saying that everything's going to be peachy. I'm not saying that you're not going to have any problems. I'm not saying that you're not going to have financial problems. People ain't going to pick on you because you love Jesus. I'm not, going to, I'm not telling you that. The Bible says different. The Bible says you're going to have problems. But guess what? Guess what? If you're in love and somebody walks up to you and says something bad about your girlfriend, what do you do, guys? What do you do? You take care of it, right? Or you play it off. You don't pay it no mind because you're in love. Well, guess what? The deeper in love with God you get, somebody comes up to you and starts talking trash to you because you're a Christian, it's not going to devastate you. It's not going to sidetrack your faith. It's not going to derail you. You know what it's going to do? It's going to fire you up. And you're going to say, oh, really? Well, maybe you don't know about him. Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you about him. Let's talk about that. Because obviously you don't know the God that I know because I love my God. Now, granted, this is a process, but it's a great process. It's fun. It's wonderful. It has heartache. It has headache. And it, because things in the world are going to disappoint you. God never will unless you set your eyes on worldly things. But if you just love God, you're going to want to do things for God. You're going to want to do things for Him. You're going to want to give Him your money. You're going to want to give Him your time. You're going to want to help people because you just love God. Y'all ever seen somebody that's fresh in love? Don't it get on your nerves? Oh, I just love them so much. I just love to sit there and watch them breathe when they're asleep. Shut up. <laughs> don't you? But why don't we get like that over God? Why don't we just, oh man, I just, I can't wait to go to church on third Friday because we're going to pray together. Ain't that awesome? We're going to pray together. I know 8 o'clock on Sunday morning is early, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to church because I know they're praying at 8 o'clock Sunday mornings right there. That's a plug, by the way. We're going to pray. You know, when it comes time, how many of you ever go to a family gathering or something and they go, okay, who's going to say the blessing? 
the youth, where's, where's, where's my young folks? Christopher, you remember. What do you do? Not it. You, the more you love God, you're going to be going, I'll do it. I'll do, I just love talking to God. Because you realize that's what you're doing when you pray. You're talking to God. Forget everybody else in the room. It don't matter what they think. You're talking to God. And you just love talking to God. Because you love God. When you get home, you're going to be praying. In the, in the morning when you wake up, you're going to be praying. Before you go to bed at night, you're going to be praying. How many of you now struggle to pray every day? I'm guilty. I, I'm not, this is not an example. This is for real. Okay? Why is that? I'm telling you. How many of you struggle uh, fixing to get personal? How many of you struggle reading this every day? I can give you... 10 tips on how to read the Bible better. I can give you 15 ways to increase your Bible consumption a week. It don't matter. The more you love God, the more you're going to want to know about Him, the more you're going to want to know Him, the more you're going to want to hear His words, read His words, spend time with Him, and guess what? Tell other people about Him. You fall in love with a with, with a person and, and we can't shut you up parents <laughs> y'all thought I was going to leave you alone didn't you once you got married no it ain't just for the young people young couples parents grandparents how many times we got to look at pictures of your grandkids and your kids and hear about everything they do at school I got the opportunity and I and I am fixing the clothes, so I got the opportunity, and I say it's opportunity because I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I, I got to uh, escort my mother to her high school reunion, and that was, that was a great experience for me. Um, there was a lady sitting at the door that told me they were going to teach me some things, which scared me, um, but we went in, and... Uh, we were sitting there at the table eating, and there were several, there were big round tables, so everybody was, there was a lot of people sitting there. And there was a lady sitting beside me, and she talked about this child the whole time, how, how she could read, and she won't but like three years old, and she could read, and she could do this, and she could do that. And she, oh, she's getting ready to go to school. And I asked her, I said, is this your granddaughter? She said, no, no, it's just a, a, a friend's child that I know. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, you know, look, last week my son went outside, pointed up at the sky and said, air pain, air pain. She said, oh, that's so cute and sweet. How old is he? I said, oh, he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> kind of loses a little bit there, don't it? <laughs> he's 20 now, so that was a couple years ago. Um, <laughs> The point is, we don't mind talking about our kids, our grandkids. We don't mind talking about our significant other. We don't mind it. But when it comes to talking about God, we clam right up. There's a few reasons why I believe that is. Number one, we don't think we know enough. And we're scared. We're scared to start talking because we're scared somebody's going to ask a question. We're not going to know the answer to it. You know what? That happens to me a lot. And I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, I don't know. But let's look it up. Or, hey, Steve, <laughs> ain't there a verse in the Bible that talks about such and such? Where is that at? Okay, thanks. It's right there. I, don't, I will do it in a heartbeat and ask Steve. If I can't get him, I, I might call one of y'all. Hey, 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 you know what? Because I know what the Bible says. I just don't know where it says it a lot of times, and that's just because I don't read it as much as I ought to. I'm getting better. But, you know, when people want to know, you know, we're, we're scared. We're scared that we're not going to know the answers. Or, we're scared somebody's going to, you know, think we're weird if we love Jesus. You don't care if people think you're weird for loving the person that you love, right? So why should it matter about you loving God? Did that person that you're with 
your, your spouse, your significant other, did they die for you? And I know you're going to say, well, no, they're right here. Well, you know, Jesus rose again. In fact, y'all have all heard about that guy who, him and his wife were um, over in Israel. And his wife died while they were over there. And they offered to bury her over there. And he said, oh, no, I'm taking her back to America. I know y'all buried a guy over here one time. And he came back after three days. I, mm -mm. <laughs> I ain't taking that chance. So... <laughs> I know y'all heard that story. So. But here's the point. Here's the point. You're not scared. You're not ashamed. And that person didn't die for you. And some of you know so much about your kids, your spouse. I can go to Subway right now and order my, my son's sandwich. My wife changes hers about every time, so I, I, I don't know about that one. But, but Jeremy gets the same thing every time. He gets a foot-long white bread, ham with American cheese, not toasted. He gets mustard, pickles, and banana peppers. And that's it. So... Yes, I know, and I just put his order out there. And, and you know, y'all feel free to write that down. If he ever calls you up and says, can you bring me a sandwich, you'll know what to get. Um, but the point is, we love our kids. We love each other. Do we love God? With all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. Because I'm telling you, if you do, then all this other stuff, the fasting, the praying, the tithing, the feeding the poor, the the feeding the hungry, clothing the poor. I was getting it mixed up. All of that kind of stuff will just flow out of your love for God. It'll just flow. So this morning, I'm going to ask for you to go ahead and stand up. I'm going to ask for Jimmy to come on up. Prayer team, come on up. I'm getting ready to pray, and we're going to sing, and these folks are going to be up here to pray with you. If you need prayer this morning, come on up here. If there's something going on in your life, come on up here and let them pray for you. You know, the Bible also says that God works everything together for good for those who love the Lord. How many times have you gone, well, why ain't it working together for good for me? Number one, you might not be patient enough because it takes some time. Number two, do you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind? I wish I could give you five things to make all that happen, but I can't. All I can do is to tell you that if you pour your heart out to him this morning, he will answer you tell him what's on your mind, what's on your heart. You tell him that you want to love him. You tell him that you want to just know him more. And he will make that happen. You won't have to do nothing. He'll make it happen. So just come as the Lord leads you this morning. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your words this morning. God, thank you. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to die in my place so that I can live with you forever. That I can call you my father and you call me your child. I don't deserve that. I deserve death. But you give life freely. We don't have to do anything to earn it because we can't. But once we accept it, once we receive it, once we just give ourselves over to you, God, and we just start this journey of learning you and just loving you. All that other stuff is going to happen because we're going to want it. We're going to want to help people. We're going to want to love others because you love others. God, just open our hearts today, Lord. Fill us 
with you, with your presence. Thank you, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all come as God leads you this morning. When the music fades and all is true.